Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Lesson 1 of the Learn to Crochet program, coming to you from the Youth Services Department of the Lake Villa District Library. I'm Miss Jackie, and in this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of crochet. If you have signed up for this program, you'll have your bag of supplies. However, if you didn't sign up for this program, please feel free to follow along with us. All you'll need is some yarn and a crochet hook. I'm going to have all of the patterns that we create in these videos typed out in the description box below. I'm going to show you the four different lessons. The first one is the string game. In lesson number two, we're going to be creating a really fun keychain. Lesson number three is friendship cuffs. And for lesson number four, we're going to create a pencil case. These lessons get progressively harder as we go along, but they're all pretty simple for beginners. Now let's get into lesson number one. Inside lesson number one, you'll have the pattern. This lesson is pretty simple. I'm just going to teach you how to get started in crochet. You'll also get a crochet hook. These come in different sizes. This one is a five millimeter and it's perfect for beginners because it's not too big and it's not too small. And you'll also get a small skein of yarn. Okay, let's take the wrapper off of our yarn. We need to learn how to put the yarn on our crochet hook. So I'm going to teach you how to create a slip knot. Put your yarn down on your table in a circle. Now you're going to put your pointer finger and your thumb together like a little beak. You're going to go through the loop and grab the end of the yarn. You're going to pull it gently off your fingers with the end that's attached to the skein. And this creates your slip knot. You can loosen it or tighten it. And this is what's going to go on your crochet hook. So let's put this on our crochet hook and tighten it a little bit. You don't want it too tight or too loose. You want it to be able to slide up and down the crochet hook easily. Now I'm going to show you how I hold a crochet hook. I put the end of the yarn over my pointer finger and wrap my other fingers around it. This helps me to keep the string taut. And then with my thumb and my middle finger, I pinch the yarn right next to the hook. This just gives me a lot of control. Now you can hold it like I do, and at first it's going to feel very awkward, but as you practice, you'll figure out what works best for you, and you can hold it any way you'd like. To create your chain, you're going to wrap your hook around the yarn, and then slowly pull it through the loop. Let's do that again. You wrap it around the yarn and slowly pull it through the loop. So wrap it around the yarn, grab it with the hook, and pull it through the loop. And again, it's important to keep the slip knot loose, but not too loose where you lose control over it. So if I were to pull the slip knot really wide and try to crochet, it's very difficult and awkward, as you can see. And then if I have the slip knot too tight, you're not going to be able to pull the yarn through the loop. It has to be just right, and you'll get this as you practice. So we are going to chain 200 chains. Now I am going to speed up this video so that we're not here all day. Once you catch the crochet bug, you're going to want to crochet all the time. It is really a fun hobby. It's a very portable hobby. You can put it in your backpack and take it with you on the go. Or you can just crochet at home in front of the TV. <laughs> While I'm speed crocheting here, I wanted to mention that we have a lot of wonderful programming going on at the Lake Villa District Library. And to find out about all of these programs, you can go to our website at lvdl.org and look at the calendar. So here is our project halfway through. This is 100 chains. We have 100 more to go, but I just wanted to stop and show you that. When I first started crocheting, it was difficult for me to get my chains even. Some would be really tight and some would be really loose. But as I practiced, my stitches became more even. So don't lose heart. Just keep practicing and you'll get it. Okay, we're almost up to 200 stitches and our chain is getting really long. 
Let me slow down on the last few here. And we are going to attach the ends of this chain rope. And here is our long chain. If your stitches aren't perfectly even, that's just fine for this project. I just wanted to give you a project that allowed you to practice your chains. And now let's find the two ends to our string game. I'm not going to cut the yarn yet. But to connect the two ends, we're going to find our very first chain. So I'm pulling it through my finger so it's all facing the same way. And find the very first stitch, and there it is. Let's put our crochet hook through that first stitch. Sometimes they can be kind of hard to see. But we'll push that through, and then I'm going to pull up a loop. So I'll wrap it around the yarn and we'll pull it through the first chain and the last chain. Let's do that one more time. So we'll push our hook through the first chain then we'll wrap it around the yarn and pull it through the first chain and the last chain. And now it's connected and we can cut off the end. So find a pair of scissors and snip off the end. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail, a few inches. And we're going to wrap our crochet hook around the tail and pull that all the way through. Just pull the yarn all the way through and then we're going to pull it tight so it doesn't come undone. And I'm just pulling both ends snugly. Now we don't want to cut off the ends because that could unravel our work. So we're going to weave both of the ends in a little bit. You could do this with a needle, but you can also do it with your crochet hook. So I'm just going to go in through some of the stitches and grab a hold of the tail and pull it all the way through. We'll do that a few times. This will weave the tails inside the work and hide them and keep it from unraveling. So I'll do that a few more times. And now we can cut off the tail. I'll cut it kind of close to the project. I'll give the chain a little tug to pull the end of the yarn inside and it hides it really well. And then you're going to do it with the second tail. You don't have to go into each and every chain, just here and there. Wrap it around your hook and pull it through. Now let's cut the tail off of this side. And again, cut it as close as you can to the project. Give it a little tug to pull the end in, and we are ready to play with our string game. If you've never heard of the string game, there's a lot you can do with it. I'm going to show you how to create the cup and saucer figure. So you're going to want to tuck your thumb inside the circle, as well as your pinky. The string is going to be in front of your other fingers. Next, you're going to grab the yarn on each side with your pointer finger like so. And now comes the kind of tricky part. You're going to put your thumbs over the yarn and then under, and then you need to let go of the bottom string, and that can be kind of tricky. Next, let go of the yarn around your pinkies, and here is your cup and saucer. I'm going to turn it so you can see it better. But let's do that one more time. Your thumb and pinky will be inside the circle. Use your pointer fingers to draw out the yarn. Your thumbs will go under and drop the bottom string and then drop the string around your pinkies. <laughs> and there again is the cup and saucer. There is a lot you can do with this string. Look it up on YouTube with a guardian's permission, of course. Have fun crocheting, everyone. I'll be back again next week for lesson number two. Bye.